I want you guys to think about the f- the moment right before you're about to go on your first date with a beautiful guy or girl or non-binary um fucking whatever they they want to be called. I want you to think about the first time that you're going to go on a date with a beautiful human being. Um, you know, you're getting ready in your room, you're fucking texting your buddies, dude, I'm finally going to maybe get something tonight. Or your girl, you're texting your girls, holy shit, this guy's kind of fucking hot. Oh my God. You know, you're, you, you build it up, right? It's kind of fun. And then I want you to think about the worst time you've ever had on a first date. The guy fucking slips up and says something. The girl shows up drunk. The guy does some weird shit. Guys always do weird shit on first dates, kisses you on the cheek, or like says a fucking poem to you at the end of the date, weird shit like that. Think about all of those times, the fun times, the bad times, the awkward moments, the getting lucky moments. Think about all of that, okay? Channel all that energy, and for the next 30, 40 minutes, we're going to be talking about first dates, and I've done this before. I've talked about first dates before. I haven't made an episode dedicated to it, But it's such a good topic, at least for me to talk about, because I have a lot of people that share great stories all the time. And um, I've being someone that's 21, I mean, now I'm in a relationship, but the past fucking three years, I mean, I was pretty much dating all the time. And even if it was a first date, that means you're at your house and hooking up. It's still a first date, right? It's it's about the first encounter that you have with a new person. And will it go shitty or will it go well? So I asked my friends and family on Instagram. I said, um, share your stories about your best or worst first date experience. And let's fucking go from there. Now, I looked up before I get started, okay? I want to give a quick shout out to a TV show called Parental Control. Uh, this was like an older TV show on MTV. I don't know why I keep saying TV show. This was an older show on MTV. And uh, it was like, it was supposed to be a dating show. I think it was obviously scripted. Well, no, okay, it was obviously scripted. But like, they tried to make the dates seem kind of real. And if you don't know what the show is, basically, the parents would come on. I'm going to play a clip so you could hear it. But the parents would come on and be like, our daughter is so sweet and she's just a great little fucking person, but her boyfriend is a total dweeb. And then the dad would be like, yeah, this guy sucks. And then the boyfriend would get on and would show a clip of him. I'm actually explaining what I'm about to play for those that aren't going to watch. But then it shows the boyfriend and he's obviously like a dirt bag. And then throughout the show, the, the boyfriend's girlfriend, which is the parent's daughter, She goes on dates. She goes on like three dates with random guys that like MTV set her up with. And they go on three different dates and the boyfriend has to watch the girl go on dates. Okay. So then she would like, then, okay. At the end, they would line all the boys up like her, her current boyfriend. And then these three guys that she just met that MTV randomly fucking put in the show. And then she would be like, I choose Jordan. Jordan was a sweetie. He kissed me on the cheek. He took me golfing and he's just has a twinkle in his eye. And then that's how the show would end. And then like the next, you never find out about their relationship. Then the next episode, new people. So I'm going to play this quick clip because I think it gets you in a good mood for, uh, for, for first date type of conversation. You know, tell me this isn't exactly what I just fucking explained, by the way. Um, Okay, let's connect the speaker. Ange doesn't know what he's doing half the time. I'm a fucking stroke job. You know, the same thing. Um, Also, I watched the show when I was a kid, and I thought that it was like 100% real. Like, not one ounce in my body thought, like, oh, this is scripted. I also, I mean, I kind of thought, like, all reality shows were real, so maybe it's my fault. But imagine this is fucking real, okay? I'm Alan. I'm a mortgage broker. And I'm Lorraine. I'm a banker. We cherish our daughter, Jenna, with all of our hearts. She's the smartest and most caring daughter any two parents could ever ask for. Her life would be perfect if it wasn't for one big problem. (laughs) Okay, so now it shows like the... (laughs) 
the boyfriend like ripping his shirt off. He's like, fuck you guys. Ah, I'm a fucking asshole. He has, they like tell him to pretend to be an asshole for 30 seconds for this clip. Your boyfriend is one big meatball. Oh. This is Jenna. Your boyfriend's one big fruit salad. Okay. She's dating Dean. They've been together for a year and she thinks he's the big man on her campus. But mom and dad want him expelled. So they're setting Jenna up on two blind dates with guys they've each handpicked just for her. If you think this is hard for Jenna, just imagine how her boyfriend Dean's going to feel as he sits down with her parents and they watch the dates together. So then the boyfriend sits down and watches them. Also, the dates are like, they're the most fucking sporadic shit ever. I don't even know if that's a word. Let's find out if that's a word really quick. I think it's a word. What I mean is, they're the, it's so random. Like the boyfriend will be like, What's up? I'm Kobe and I work at Top Golf. Today my plan is to take Sarah on a Top Golf true experience. And then Sarah will be like, "I love golfing. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to golf." And then the parents are like, "No, she fucking doesn't. She's never golfed a day in her life. This isn't the guy for her." And then the boyfriend's sitting there watching this and he's like, "Fuck this, man. Fuck that. I'm not going to watch my girlfriend get fucked by another dude. I want her back." And then they go through that. So that TV show reminded me, I saw a clip of this like two weeks ago and I wanted to make a, I made a note in my phone. That's why I started this episode. But that TV show reminded me of, you know, sometimes that I went on first dates and they weren't great. Or you go on a first date and the person is like completely different than what you thought. Not even just looks wise. Like, of course, there's the time where a girl or a guy face tunes their shit out or you know they say that they're something and they're not really I plenty of girls when I went to LA I used to go to LA and just like swipe on tinder and um every fucking girl this is just a fact okay I'm not meaning to shit on LA but every girl uh in LA the the fucking their bio would say like, I'm an actress, I'm a two-time fucking Super Bowl champ. And then you would meet them and be like, oh, what did you, okay, the Super Bowl is a, lot, a joke. Uh, you would meet them and be like, hey, what movie have you been in? Or like, what have you acted in? And she'd be like, well, I haven't acted yet, but I plan on it. So I just put it there because I'm optimistic. And you're like, oh, that's fucking not how that works. So Take it out of your bio. What do you really do? Well, I work at Chick-fil-A for now, but like soon I'm going to be on Disney Channel. Okay. Cool. So I want a billion dollars, so I'll just put billionaire in my fucking bio. Is that how it works? Then, and I'm sure, and it's not, this is not a thing against women. Men do it too. I just happen to not be checking men on Tinder because I am not interested in men like that. Okay. Uh, but I'm sure men do it too. I, I actually know for a fact because I have a pl plenty of girlfriends that swipe on Tinder. Guys, you know what guys do the most? They put entrepreneur. They're like, yo, I'm a fucking entrepreneur. Uh, I'm a CEO of my own marketing firm. And then girls are like, holy shit, what the fuck do you, like, what do you do? What does that mean? And it'll be like, well, you know, my dad set me up with like a decent gig. I make 40K a year. Okay, you're not a fucking entrepreneur. All right, let's get things straight. First, first rule, Angelo's rule book to first dating, okay? Number one, be honest with who the fuck you are, all right? I was so honest on my dating apps or on my dating profiles. I would say I'm strictly looking for sex. If you don't want that, don't mind fucking swiping left because it's, sure, okay, I know what you're thinking. That's a little trashy, yes, but it's also trashy to just like, play people, you know, have a girl over, have sex with her and then never talk to her again. That is one option. The other option is obviously be normal, go on a date and stop being a horny fuck. But then the other option, which is what I did was I am a horny fuck and I'm going to admit it and I'm going to have a girl over, sleep with her. And it's agreed between us both that this is sex only and we're not looking to do anything else. And it's a lot more fun that way because when you're having sex with a girl and, and you know that both of you guys just want to have fun, you can, you can be fun about it. When you're having sex and then you're like, oh my God, what if she gets attached? What if I fall in love? Wait, what if she fucking looks at me? Why is she looking at me like that? 
then it's ruined. Then it's like half the time you're having sex, you're thinking about the outcome of what's going to happen two weeks later and do I have to follow up and what if, fuck all that. All right, so it's a little shitty that I used to do that with dating apps, but it's the most honest way that I could have been. And when I was looking for something serious, I would put, I just want to go on a date. I, there was a time where I was just sad. I was genuinely just depressed and I was like, I don't care about sex. I don't want anything serious. I just want someone to watch a movie and cuddle with because I was just sad. And I just wanted someone to fucking to be there with me, you know, which is okay. It's honest, right? Another thing that I would never do, I would post pictures. I would just get my phone. Let's say, uh, okay, well, I don't have anything to hold because I record on my phone. I would get my phone out as I'm making the fucking profile. I would just take like three pictures of myself and I would do like one fucking kissy face, duck lip, douchebag mode. I would do like one straight face and then I would do kind of like a fake smile, you know? But they were like right away or they were within, I would use pictures that were within like a couple weeks because I changed my, first of all, I changed my hairstyle more than people change their fucking t-shirt. And I always have a different gimmick going. Sometimes I, like lately I've been in the goth mode. Uh, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm doing the gold chain. Sometimes I got the black one. Sometimes I have earrings. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes there's facial hair. I switch up my look a lot. So I wanted to always like, what you see on this fucking picture is what you're getting, okay? I'm a skinny guy. My head's kind of like a football that's like on a stand. So it's the up uh, this way. Um, you know, my one of my ears is fucking like flat at the top, which kind of sucks. I have acne scars. And every all of that would show in my pictures, okay? Um, other people, they have acne scars or they're breaking out or their face is red. They just go to Facetune and then mark all that shit. And then you see them, you think they're pretty, and then you get to them in person and they look like a fucking demon in real life. So don't do that, okay? Step one is be honest with yourself and be honest with what you want. Step two, and be honest with the people you're looking for. Step two, or tip number two, is don't use Facetune. Also, do you understand how fucking, for all the women and men and men, for all the women and men out there that are listening, when you use Facetune, you're doing a dog shit job, okay? If you have a fucked up face, and you think that using the smoothing tool to go over your whole entire face makes you look better, you're a fucking idiot and everybody knows what you're doing, okay? We know what you're up to. See, when you look at my face right now, you can see these two lines here. You can see the lines between my eyes. You could see some like marks in my, in my cheeks here. When you smooth it out, you look like a fucking, I don't even know what to, I don't even know how to explain it. You look like a color, like you look like your skin is the color beige and it's just been drawn, which isn't how people look at all. So don't do that. All right. Now I I found this article before I get to your guys' answers, my, my friends and family answers. I found this article that says nine first date tips for when you're going out with someone you've never met before. And it has a picture here of two Ladies that are on a date, and it looks like they're having a ball, and I'm sure this picture was fucking staged. Which means that nobody fucking looks like this when they go on dates. Also, look at this picture for all the viewers. Look at this guy and this girl. Like, they're on an ice cream date, and they're so fucking close to each other's face. Like, that's so not realistic. Nope. Nobody does this, okay? But other than that, let's get back to the list. Nine tips. These are not my tips, all right? This is the fucking internet. So I'm going to see what I agree with. Put safety first. Anytime you're meeting with a stranger, go somewhere safe. Yeah, obviously don't meet someone in a fucking alley in Englewood and expect to have a nice dinner. Okay, keep it casual. Don't dress up like a fucking weirdo. A first date shouldn't be a production. It should be a time where you get to know the other person about their life and experiences. A setting with a fairly low noise level. You know what? Honestly, here's my opinion. I think that sex, sexual, no, you know, I'm not even going to say that. I think that um, 
intimacy is important to display on a first date doesn't mean sex, okay? For all the fucking women out there that are like, whoa, douchebag alert, who's this guy? That's not what I'm saying, all right? I mean, holding hands, a little bit of body language, putting your arm around her or like seeing if she wants to like get a little fucking cuddly. I think that shit's good because if, for me at least, I'm, a, I'm all about like body language. I, I know when I look at someone, I know if we're fucking digging each other. I'm not weird when it comes to like making a move. So I know if I make a move, I know if the girl wants to do it or if she does it first, which has happened before, that's very kind of her. Or if she's not into it, you just you just have to know that like if she's looking at you a certain way or if she's like sitting further away from you or if she leans to the right when you're in the car, she probably doesn't want to touch you. So then don't push it. You know, you got to know this shit. But it's important to know that from experience rather than not know and then be the guy that like, grabs her face and is like, can I give you a kiss? And then she's like, what the fuck are you doing? It's absolutely not. Weirdo, fuck you. You know, you have to know what you're doing. That's tip number three. Body language is important. Don't be like, what this fucking keep it casual is saying is like, get to know each other, fairly low noise level, really talk and converse. That's all great, right? But if you're going to go on a movie date, I think movie dates are good because you can learn if you're literally, if the person is still attracted to you in person. And that's pretty important because when you go on a first date, you could sit there and talk about all you want, but she could go home and be like, wow, his fucking teeth look like shit. I'm not into him. And if you were at a first date and you were at a movie, or even if you're out to eat and you're like, holding hands or some shit, you at least know from her body language that she's into you. So I think that's an important thing. But yes, con conversations are great as well and make sure they're deep as fuck. And, and I actually mean that because that is important. Uh, don't put too much pressure on the date. Best first date expectation is simply get to know someone new. You could worry about the rest later. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I'm going to address this because people don't address this shit, all right? And I'm going to be the one to do it. Don't, okay, look, here's, I'm just going to say it how I want to say it. If you're horny, all right, and you're a guy and you feel like you need a, a medicine or like Viagra or you feel like you're going to be nervous when you have sex and you don't know what to do, there is a portion of people that just struggle from a problem, okay? That's okay. But in my opinion, I believe that a lot of people amp it all up, worry themselves, they don't really need Viagra at age 19, but they do it anyways because they're worried, they're freaking out, they're nervous, they don't know, they haven't had experience, and all of that fucking turns into they're finally in bed, you can't get hard, you can't do whatever. Here's a tip, okay? Before you just just a tip from me, and if you don't if you disagree, that's fine. I would say don't beat off for two weeks, all right? Get your sensitivity back in your body. Um Stop looking at porn because you're you're tricking your brain to think that you could only get hard if a girl is naked on her knees begging you for the biggest, like, chill, all right? Separate, just distance yourself from porn stars, from sexual videos of any sort and jerking off and just live your life for two weeks, okay? And don't even think, just really try to not think about it. Really focus at work, focus on school, focus on going out. Don't even bring the girl back to your house. After you've done the two weeks, now get in bed with the girl and don't expect anything to happen. Just start making out with her, okay? Obviously, if, if she consents and she's your girlfriend or it's a first date thing and she's down to hook up, obviously, you know, that shit's obvious. But get in bed and then get cuddly and do whatever. Start making out and see where it goes, okay? I'm pretty sure that you'll be okay. When Anytime people start thinking like, oh my God, what if she thinks my dick's small? What if, uh, what if, I, shit, what if I shit the bed? What if I shit the bed when we're kissing? Then it, start, it turns into your dick's free, your mind is freaking out and then your dick's freaking out and then nobody's doing anything right and then you can't get hard and then you're sweating and then the girl thinks, what the fuck is this problem? And then it goes bad. So just don't think about it, you know? The other thing is, here's a, here's a big tip from, from your boy Ange, all right? 
go or do the date when you don't want to do the date. That's how you'll fucking, that's how you'll know. Because I remember there was times where it was like a Thursday night and I'd be like, fuck, I don't want to go to this fucking movie or I don't want to do this with this fucking chick. And I wouldn't want to do it, but then I'd be like, no, I'm fucking, I'm going in this mood. Because if she could, like, I wouldn't be mad when I got there. But in this mindset of like, I don't want to do it, making myself do it would take me out of my comfort zone. And then I could look at it like, well, you know, it's fucking, I had a pretty good night. And then when you know it could bring you from like not wanting to to wanting to, then you want to more. You get it? Okay, so tip number four, skip the small talk. Don't spend your whole date talking about the weather. You know what I fucking do hate? I hate basic shit questions. Like, okay, people are going to get mad at me here. They're not mad. But there's a lot of people that ask me like, what's up? How, how are you today? What the fuck is good? And like, okay, it's sweet. My girlfriend does this a lot. All right, this is basically what I'm trying to say. My girlfriend always texts me and says, how are you? And it's sweet. But my answer, because I fucking answer that so many times, is good. And then she'll be like, okay, fucking, I won't answer. I won't ask you shit anymore then, babe. Fine. And then I'm like, no, it's not like, no, I know that it's sweet when you do it. Okay. I know that you're just asking how I'm doing and I could say I'm doing bad and you're going to be there for me. But when I'm doing good, I just say like good. And then we've had this conversation before. I'll be like, babe, ask me like something a little bit more. And then she, she'll be like, okay, I'll just send you 15 questions then. That's great. That's a great conversation. I'll just start interview, interviewing you. Okay. Listen, I know you're watching this right now. That's not what I mean. It's just like a little bit more of a little bit more detail. Hey, what did you do with blank? Blah, blah, blah. blah. You know, what did you do with your brothers this morning? What are you doing to fucking what? Or fuck all of that. And let's just talk about like something cool. You know, let's talk about like dolphins. Message me and be like, hey, did you know dolphins swim 13 miles per hour? I'll be like, no, holy shit. How do you know that? You'll be like, fucking, I read it online. I'll be like, cool. Is it that better? I don't know. Small talk isn't really how are you, but how are you on a first date is like, uh, what are you expecting them to say? I'm great. Cool. Do you want to kiss me now? No, not really. Okay. So yes, skip the small talk. I think skip small talk always. Um, I, I like to get deep in conversation when, when it comes to like family fucking upbringings, like the worst story ever, some sickening shit that you heard, like fucking murder stories, kidnapping. Then we start getting more morbid and fucked up. I like that type of shit. You want to talk about the deep web. You want to talk about like scary movies and like production fucking let's do that. All right. Um, but yes, I mean, sometimes when it's, when it's, when they're basic questions, it gets a basic answer. And then that turns into like, we're not really make, we're not growing anything here. And I like to grow things. Number five, come prepared with the mission stories. You know what? Fuck this. Number six, don't talk about, don't forget about your needs. Number seven, uphold your personal boundaries Number eight, be present. Be there. Don't be a, don't be dead. Be alive. Fuck that. Let's get to the stories. That that list was dog shit. All right. Well, it wasn't that bad. But time for you. You guys submitted these stories. All right. These are the best and worst first date experiences that you've had. I absolutely love reading these because I think it's a fucking ball. And uh, I don't read them until like right now. Like I'm, this is the first time I'm reading these. So you're getting a very live, very live answer. Let's get the picture of these two having the happiest ice cream cone date ever in the back here. Will that work? Yeah. All right. Um, you know what? Maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. All right. This person says, one on a blind date senior year. Needed a date for prom. Dude looked decent in all of his pictures, and I met him in St. Charles for dinner. I get there. The dude does not look like the pictures. I almost just drove away after seeing him, but could be a cool dude, so I stayed. Right off the bat, this girl's giving this guy a fair fucking shot, okay, which I, which I can appreciate because as much as I hate when people fake shit 
and they look different in pictures and all that. To be the person that stays rather than leaving, like I'm just going to be honest with you. If I was to go on a date with a girl and she looks gorgeous in her pictures and looks nothing like what she does when I get there, here's what I'm going to do. Here's me in my car. That's what I would do. And if you didn't see it, then you missed it. You missed what I did. And that's how I lure you into watching the video podcast. Um, Anyways, first second I meet him, he awkwardly hands me a rose he made out of metal and painted blue. I shrug it off and go to the restaurant. Okay. Hey, baby, I got you a metal a metal rose that I welded in weld shop class. Here's what she does. Cool. Let's go eat. I think that's there's probably a little bit more there that she's not saying, but that's fine. I shrug it off, go to the restaurant. They only had seating, which was fine, but he refused. Oh, they only had bar seating. He refused and made us walk around STC for an hour until picking a place. We're eating and he tells me at least four times he has a coupon for this place his mom gave him. Hockey is on, so I make conversation. He tells me he would never watch hockey because it's boring as I'm wearing a Blackhawks jersey. Hmm. That's, I mean, that's kind of kind of unfortunate, kind of shitty, right? Um, he talks for an hour about how he races carts, which I guess is like tiny go-karts. Big bitch, by the way. Just kidding. You know, maybe there are some guys that are super dope that ride fucking go-karts and don't like hockey. We're leaving after talking about him the whole time. He walks me to my car, gets down on one knee. Oh, God. Where's the rest of this story? Now I lost it. Um, Gets down on one knee and fucking kisses her hand is basically what she says. Um, I think I remember seeing this. So, gets down on his knee, kisses her hand, big weirdo fucking weirdo, okay? And she said it was like the wettest kiss ever, like just slobber on her hand, okay? Um, Now, here's the thing. First of all, anytime you bring, when it comes to bringing flowers for me, that's, that's something that you get when we're officially dating, like when we're officially dating, then I'll start doing the flower thing because th- first of all, no, it's not normal, right? People in 2019 don't bring flowers and that's unfortunate, but that's just how it is. When it's your girlfriend, year anniversary, six months, whatever the fuck, like a nice day, f- Valentine's day. Yeah, obviously do it. But first date type shit. If a first date, you first time you've ever met, if you bring a flower of any sort, plastic, fucking linen, metal or real, you actually look, you look weird. And that's unfortunate because 30, 40 years ago, guys would come up to the door and knock and be like, Hey, Mrs. Wilson, I'm here to see your lovely daughter. I'm Eric, by the way. And then they'd shake hands and they'd be like, Oh my God, Eric, it's so nice to see you. Honey, Eric's here. And then fucking the daughter would come down in her dress and she'd be like fucking walking in slow motion. And then he'd be like, I'll have her back by eight. Ha ha ha. See you soon, guys. Nice meeting you. And then the, he would like have flowers is where I was supposed to insert that. And then the parents would be like, oh, my God, we'll get a vase. What a sweetheart. I like him. We like him. That's how it was in like 1970s. OK, now. If you even go to the door and knock, here's what would happen. Hello? Nobody's fucking answering, okay? People don't even answer their doors anymore. So, wouldn't happen. And if they did answer, it would go like this. Who the fuck are you? Oh, I'm I'm Dom. I'm supposed to take your daughter on a date? Yeah, no, no, sorry. Nope, absolutely not. Close the door and then you never see her. So different times, different generations, different times. Uh, It used to be looked at as a very sweet thing, bringing a flower. What a fucking gentleman. Now you bring a flower, the parents are going to be like, what if it has fucking pesticides? What if there's a bomb in there? We're not take, we're not putting that in our house. Nope, absolutely not. So don't do it. And don't, and don't, don't. You know what? I'm actually not even, if we're at a movie and then we're in the car 
and then we're getting home or I'm dropping you off and then we make out or something. I'm a fan of that. But first kisses are also really fucking awkward when it hasn't been established that you're sexually attracted to each other, you know, because that's part of why I like to put on my Instagram or on my, on my Instagram bio, on my dating apps, like I, I want to hook up. I'm looking for hookups because then they know if we're hanging out, we probably will do something sexual, whether it's just making out or a kiss or holding hands or going the whole fucking nine yards. Um, so is that the saying? The whole nine yards? Really? Um, yeah. So when when you don't know if you want to do anything, then when you kiss her, like you go in for the hug. You know what I had happen once? I felt so bad. I went to hug this girl and like, I'm not fucking making the first move when I don't know if you like me or not. This was a first date that we just went on a movie date. It was not established. It was actually like, I didn't even know who she was. It was like a blind date and we met. It was a friend's friend. We met in fucking downtown, went on a date. We walked around. It was really cool. We saw a movie. We walked around for like two hours. Then we saw a movie. Then when she was leaving, I went to just go hug her. So like my head went to the left. She turns and kisses me on the cheek, which made me feel like she felt rejected. So then when she pulled away, I grabbed it. And I was like, okay, I didn't know you were going to do that. And then I kissed her and then never talked to her again. So I, I it wasn't my fault. Then I messaged her and I was like, hey, I had a great night. And then she like didn't really message me back. So... Maybe she felt hurt that I didn't kiss her first and then like she knew that I was just trying to make up for it because she fucking went for it and I didn't. I don't know, man. Fuck that. Here's my submission. Um, You know, I'm going to do that one after. This is the next one. So Eric approached me on, get this, Words with Friends. Words with Friends is an app, by the way, for all the older folks that listen. It's an app. It's basically like, like a crossword puzzle in 2019, okay? And you play with other people online on your phones. He was a friend of mine. Oh, he was a friend of my then roommate's past restaurant life. I don't know what that even meant. I don't know what I just said. He's a friend of my then roommate's past restaurant life. We're just going to leave that. Um... Which I think she's saying like my roommate. She was a friend of my roommates. P- period. That maybe worked at a restaurant. We accidentally met on met on purpose at a bar when I was out with my roommate, which led to our first date. Went to PF Chang's and we before we got our first drink, I said, "Look, there are three things we needed to get out of the way: religion, politics, and money." Oh, this girl's just going straight fucking in. I I appreciate that style. You see, that's kind of what I, she was just honest right up front. Here's what we're fucking getting out of the way. If you don't match these things, we're not going to work out. That's like what I did, except I'm a, more of a douchebag about it. And she's giving a more honest, sweet, respectable approach. Politics we'll never talk about because we'll never agree on them. Religion. I'm marrying in the Orthodox church. So if you're not down bye. And money, what's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. That's pretty funny, actually. Um, so, is there a second date? He said, yes, where are our drinks? It's actually cute. It's actually kind of cute. I mean, it's a little intimidating. If a girl said like, no, I would say yeah, too, because that's like funny. It's a funny thing. I would laugh. It's a good good strategy. Our ages at the time, him 34, me 28. I wasn't dating to fuck. I was dating to find the one. Whether that was casually dating or whatever, I just wasn't going to get jagged around. I wanted to I wanted to learn what I wanted, what I liked, what I didn't, and that was having relationships, whatever that was, but getting those important topics out of the way. Yeah, no, that's I mean, hey, that's fucking great. Um you you can't here's another thing. You can't this is for sex, this is for dating, this is for emotional response, this is to learn trust. For anything that's important in a relationship, you're not gonna fucking learn until you do it multiple times. I don't care if that means five relationships in middle school, two boyfriends in high school, one boyfriend in college. Like you have to have boyfriends throughout or girlfriends throughout your life, at least one or two before you were 18, one or two when you were 19, 20, one or like 
something, you know, date someone when you're 21, unless you found the person before then, which is great, but you're not really going to know until you have multiple people to look back at and say, I slept with five people and here's what I like in bed. Here's what I don't like. I went on five dates. Here's what I liked. Here's what I don't like. I've dated, uh, different, different cultures, different color people, whatever you want to call it. And here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. You don't, you have to experience everything first and then choose what you are into because that's how you find out. You don't just, nobody just wakes up and says, okay, I have one fucking type and this is what I want. And it's going to be perfect. And I'm going to find the one. Nope. You got to go through some shit, man. You got to go through shit to get the good things. I've been through toxic relationships. I've been through the most awkward fucking weird dates. I've been disrespected. I've been the piece of shit that was very disrespectful. I've learned when I did wrong things. I've learned when someone wronged me. And now with my current girlfriend, I am very happy with all of those things are already figured out. So I don't have to fucking like, I don't have to test shit anymore. Like I know what I want and I, and it's what I have. So it's just, it's great, you know, because of my experience. If she was my first girlfriend, I'm sure I would see flaws or I would hate things or things would go wrong and I would freak out and I wouldn't know how to react. And then three girlfriends later, I would probably be more comfortable because I would have built my structure of like what I can handle in a relationship and what I can provide, you know? So it's important. Um, I met a young woman on Tinder, which I don't like how he says young woman. Um, but we chatted back and forth for a few days. Then I basically said, Hey, you work downtown. I live downtown. Let's meet for coffee. It's kind of, kind of cringy, but all right. Uh, well, no, it's not cringy. You, it's good. Uh, the next day she meets me for coffee at Starbucks. I order my beverage. Hey, you're a person. I'm a person. How about we do something cool together? Cool. Let's do it. Hell yeah. Let's do it. Sounds great. Um, the next day she meets me for coffee. I order my beverage. She orders her beverage. Okay. I don't like how you talk. Um, we sit there and start to start talking. She excuses herself to use the restroom. That's how I'm going to say the rest of the story. About 10 minutes go by. Someone else needs to use the restroom at this point in time. That's literally how he's talking. A Starbucks employee grabs the key and starts to knock and enter the bathroom. Oh my God. Holy shit. Listen to where this story goes. Starbucks employee grabs the key and starts to knock and enters the bathroom to find my date passed out with a needle in her arm. Heroin overdose. Holy shit. I did not think we were going to take that fucking turn. Fire slash EMS is called. Local police are called. I'm pointed out as the person who was with her only to get a wonderful lecture from the local police department as to be more careful with who I meet online. They searched my briefcase and at that point of time I was working with my attorney so that was a big hell no. Oh, they tried to surf, search his briefcase. She calls me from the hospital after they give her more Narcan and fluids. Um... Asking me to come see her, following by calling me to collect from the jail. Oh, she called him from jail to try to get her to, him to bail her out. I blocked her number and moved on. Holy shit, that's the worst. That's the worst first date I've ever heard. I don't think it. I don't think you could beat that one. So, props to you. Um, Jesus Christ. Oh, the follow-up, I found the follow-up message to the first girls with the guy that gets on his knees. She says, gets down on one knee and kissed my hand extremely wet and called me princess. And then she says she got in her car and screamed because she couldn't fucking handle anymore. Yeah, that's horrible. Princess, it was so nice to see you. <laughs> fucking makes out with her hand. Absolutely not. I would have bitch slapped that guy if I were you. So you did good by just going to your car and screaming. Next story, dude took me to lunch, went well, so we went to the beach right after. Even though we weren't dressed for it, we... Okay, sorry guys, I got a phone call, and that really fucking threw my shit off here. So now my... Okay, hold on. Alright, now I'm good. Dude took me to lunch, we went to the beach after. Even though we weren't dressed for it, we started kayaking on a whim. Saw a sea turtle, jumped off into the water with our clothes on, and everything to chase it. Then drove me home in his motorcycle with our clothes still soaking wet. 
Coolest date, but only saw the dude once more. When your heart is not in it, it's not in it. Coolness can be damned. I'm confused if this is the best date or the worst date. Because the like sea turtle jumping in the water, that sounds pretty... F That's like some parental control shit. Um, but I don't know how to respond to that one. Next story. Normally I'm all for first dates that aren't getting food or coffee, but going to the zoo or on a walk since it's so much more relaxed and easier to talk about the stuff around you. But my date was, a, was the opposite. The guy had been talking to a lot on Tinder until we found the time to go out had only... Okay, I don't, I, people just don't know how to type or what. We had only been talking in the evening and we only had time in the evening, so we decided to go to dinner. It was a nice, relaxed restaurant and we had a lot to talk about. Afterwards, we went on a walk and came by a playground. We spent the rest of our date on the swing set and two years later, the fun st still didn't stop. Next year, we're going to get married. See, this is fucking proof that you don't have to like go bowling. You don't have to go fucking ice sculpting with your, like you don't have to come up with some crazy idea. A movie, going for a fucking walk, coffee. Those things are sometimes boring, but if the person's fucking special, you make something out of it. Me and my girlfriend now, we, our first date, our like technical first date was a movie. And after the movie, we sat outside and talked for like two hours. So it like, it could have just been like, go see a movie. Don't say a word to each other, go home. And then you fucking, but it wasn't because there was clearly a connection there. So don't fucking, it doesn't mean you have to have a ton of money. It doesn't mean you have to have like some extreme fucking uncle that knows a guy that could get you at a fucking helicopter meeting you know what I mean um it wasn't super exciting we went out to for a long day this is you know another cute one we got lunch more walking we went for a drive sat in his car then I had to leave if I didn't it had would have been longer nothing feel, feels more natural than dinner and a movie then she loves it okay it's great Last one. I dated this guy who was older than me. I like to say I like the more fucked up ones, so I just kind of blow past the happy ones. I dated this guy who was older than me in high school. He was a senior, 18, and I was a sophomore, 15. Ah, rape. Um, he made a calendar of pics for, of him and his two brothers for his mom for Christmas every year. The first time we actually hung out out of school, out of school, and our cars slash houses, he asked me to take pics with him for the calendar. I said, sure. Little did I know they wore Speedos in the calendar pics. It was cold as fuck out, November slash December, and this Matt Hemi almost taking naked pics of him at random places around the town. He drove us around in his old minivan. Rapey. Um, <laughs> we even went to another classmate's house to take pictures with her horse. Okay, what the fuck is happening? I'm sure she was weirded out by the sa by the whole thing. He dropped off home after. It was ex extremely awkward, embarrassing, not fun, and probably illegal. Okay, a lot of things to take here. Who the fuck has a pet horse? Um, why the... F okay, you know what? It's kind of actually funny that he takes... Like, it's not... It's like TV show funny. You know, and it's like, oh yeah, it's funny. You don't laugh, but it's like you could ad admire the attempt. It's TV show style funny that he would take Speedos outside and make a calendar for Christmas. It's not funny that you're 15 and he's 18 because that is rapey. Okay, so anytime it involves th that much of a difference in your age and the fact that you're 15 and he's 18, he's legally an adult, you're legally fucking like... 15 nope so the fact that he dude ew, because it makes it fucked up because the fact that he wanted to take pictures of you in a bikini like maybe he just did all of that so he could get pictures of you in a bikini which is fucked up and like that's kind of what i believe is that like all of that was bullshit about the calendar and all that shit he just like wanted pictures of you in a bikini and now he has pictures of you still probably on his phone you're 15 and he jerks off to them and he's like 25 that's fucked up and even though you're not currently 15 and the pictures you were so like he's older it was years ago but he probably looks at your old bikini pictures disgusting okay fucked 
Um, this is a cute one. This is uh, someone that I know. Here, here's my submission, my worst first date story. So I'm going out with this guy and he's super hot. Six foot, dark hair, blue eyes, hot. He's super confident and I couldn't tell if it was just that or if I was totally out of my league. Anyways, we went to see this movie in the shops of Woodfield and we still argue about what movie we saw, but I think it was one of the purges. So we flirt the whole time, but I'm so, so, so nervous. So every time he goes to hold my hand, I kind of swerve him, LOL, oops. Anyways, we see the movie and walk around before my 11 o'clock curfew and we end up getting coffee and sitting outside Jamba Juice for, which we sat outside there for like two hours. Again, he's sexy as fuck. So I'm just staring at him like low key, but we eventually get into the super deep conversation about our families and what they've taught us to want for ourselves and what we want for our lives. We tell each other some genuinely serious shit and I've known him for probably a week and won't even hold his hand. Eventually he drives me home and I remember being so nervous that I made some terrible jokes, but I guess I was lucky he liked them because he dropped me off and I fell in love. How sweet is that, you guys? Is that not just touch your fucking soul? Um, I don't know how, but I tricked him to stay with me. So I guess it became the best first date story. So that's the story of me and my girlfriend. That was our first date. There's actually a funnier story about how we met, but I'll save it. Um, yeah, dude. Okay. I would like, like I just explained earlier, like hold your hands, make it a little bit of a move. I'm not like grabbing you and like, let's fuck in the theater, babe. Like there's guys like that. Not me, okay? I am a fan of cuddling, though. I Put your legs on me. I'll fucking rub your thighs a little bit. Hold hands. Play with your hair. Kiss you a little... Like, do a little fucking little kisses. I like to do that type of shit, okay? Because it shows that we're, like, into each other. It doesn't mean you have to, like, whip your dick out and be like, Babe, jerk me off. Like... Don't be a creep about it. Just be normal and like a little little touchy cozy, but in a normal way. Um, I would like go to hold her hand and she would hold my hand like loose fuck like this. Like, you know, when you're holding kind of like not tight, but you're holding enough to know that you're holding a hand. And then her hand is just like kind of fucking dead fish. Like You're almost like, hey, you want to like nudge him. Like, are you fucking sleeping? What's going on? So... I looked at her and I was like, do you not want to hold my hand? And she's like, no, no, I do. So then we'd hold hands for like one minute and then she would like let go. And I'd be like, okay, you know what? We'll just then forget it. Fuck that. We're not doing that. And then I would bust her balls about it for like a few weeks. And then she finally admitted like, okay, here's the reason. I get really fucking sweaty and I'm nervous as shit when I'm around you. And it was like kind of a cute thing. And I was like, look, I don't care about your sweat. And now we hold hands and it gets sweaty as fuck between us both. And we enjoy it. So that was very sweet. Thank you, babe, for sharing the story. And we're going to end on that one because it, it was a cute note to end on. Now, for sneakers. Um, for sneakers. Where are the fucking... I just pulled the shit up and now I lost it. I have two pairs of shoes with me. I have... I'm going to talk about these after. I have these... I finally got them in hand. This is actually the... Well, I've seen them in hand first, but... First time I've shown these on the podcast. These are the Shatter Backboard 3.0s. Some people call them the Halloween ones. Whatever you want to call these, they're the SBB 3.0s, all right? They're covered in this patent leather, but it's like a crinkled patent leather. It's really it's really something different, but I fucking love it. It looks like it's cr they're creased already, but this is a dead stock pair, as you can see. And then instead of the, the normal white sole on the... Okay, wait. By the way, for the dating stories, those first dates were all great. And I hope that you guys get some courage to go on first dates. That was the point of this whole episode. It was just me trying to motivate you, I guess. Back to the shoes. They have like this kind of yellow. It's like an off-white sole rather than just the bright white sole, which I really fucking like. Um... And yeah, I think these are awesome. People actually hated these. The SB, the Shatter Backboard ones go for like a thousand bucks. The Shatter Backboard reversed pair, the 2.0s, those go for like five to seven hundred. These are going for like 250, which is nothing. And it's just simply based on the fact that they have patent leather and people didn't like it. And that's shitty. So if you guys want to steal deal, get these because for a third 
pair of a fucking amazing series of shader backboards. Uh, I'm a huge fan. What I don't like is that they didn't put anything on the insole, but I think they didn't do it on the reverse pair either. And you get what you give, you know? You, you, give, you give nothing, you get nothing. So... Here's the second pair. I think I've shown these on the on the podcast before. I just wanted to give you like a side by side of a tumbled leather and then the patent leather. Do you not fucking think that the patent leather looks cleaner? I mean, I don't know. Some people like the matted look more, but you know, here's the thing. Here's why. Let me sell you on this really quick, even though I it doesn't matter for me. Let me sell you on the idea of patent leather. Look at this. This is white fucking leather, but it's extremely soft. And there's very, you can't really see it on the video, but there's like little indents. There's lines in between. See all those fucking lines? It looks like a wrinkled person's face. If you spill shit on this shoe, those crevices are going to get dyed orange or blue or whatever the fuck color that you spilled on this shoe. It's going to dye that inside of the shoe. And you can't really get that out that well over time. Also, these stitch, the stitches here that are white, the stitching, uh, you can't, you're not going to be able to get like lift stains from those. So this shoe will get dyed a lot faster and will look like shit a lot faster. Whereas the patent leather pairs, I mean, you can literally like use a fucking Windex wipe. Anything is just going to roll off of this, first of all, because it's patent leather. Shit will just slide off. Um, it's a lot easier to clean and you don't have to worry about like deep crevices because there are none when it comes to patent leather. So a lot easier to clean. They look cleaner. And in this particular pair, they're wrinkled and like, like they look like that crinkled leather look. So they're not really going to look bad when they crease because they fucking basically already are. So that's just a few tips. It's actually not tips. That's just a few facts of why I enjoy uh, patent leather. And I think people are, went way too hard on the fucking fact that they did a patent leather shoe because they're, I think they're great. Look at how fucking, look at that. I'm a fan of them. All right, fuck you guys if you don't like them. Next thing I wanted to talk about were these uh, Cactus Jack Air Force One Lows. I got a picture of them behind me. I haven't gotten them in person yet. But I've heard that this is like some heavy sweater material. Like they're not fucking around. This suede like tongue that they have here, it's so fucking heavy. And then there's a zipper that goes down the middle. And then around the shoe, it's like suede, knit, fucking, it's a, I forgot what the type of leather is that's on the toe cap. I think it's like a short new buck I don't know, soft leather, weird thing on the toe box, but it's a very heavy shoe is my point and heavy in material. This is another shoe that if you spill shit on, it's going to stain. But, um, I will say that this is like, with all that being said, I will say this is probably one of the coolest, the coolest air force ones I've ever seen. If they were different colors, I love the style of the zipper. I love the style of the knit and the suede and all these heavy things rather than just leather because we see leather on air force ones all the fucking time i like where it's headed but it looks a little bit too much of like kooji sweater fucking 1950s style for me just because the colors i mean like i don't know i don't really know what it's supposed to represent so it's probably just a lack of knowledge for me but orange purple it's like a lavender purple there's like a light mint green dark fucking there's black, there's dark blue, there's gray, there's gold. These are all colors that don't really turn me on. If there were more earthy tones and less like weird tones, I would be a fan of it. But like this, I can appreciate an olive green, a beige, a dark brown, a fucking maroon, a burgundy. But when it starts to get gold, green, blue, purple, nah, you know, fucking no thanks. But I, I can't appreciate the actual shoe. I just don't like the colors. And the back strap is pretty dope. Whatever that thing is on the back, that's I'm cool with that. Um, those, re, those are going for... I don't really know what they're going for. Let me check, actually. StockX, Travis Scott, Air Force One. Isn't it insane how Travis Scott can just release fucking anything and people want to buy it, yet his music is dog shit? I know people are going to get mad that I said that. 
All right, let's see a size 10 and a half. Size 14 goes for 455. Okay, so they're from they range from 370 to 620, which you know what? It's not too fucking bad. Size 10 and a half 600 bucks. You know what? No, what am I saying? That is bad. Fuck this shoe. That's how I that that right there explains how I am with shoes. I like it, then I'm like fuck this. Then I see the price, then I'm like, "Uh, eh, fuck it." It's not worth 600, okay? Especially not with these ugly ass colors. But maybe they'll do a round 2 with better colors and then I could see it being worth a little bit more. Next shoe that came out was these Alien uh Yeezy 380s. I'm going to admit uh Yeezys grow on people over time, obviously. And I'm not a person that wears white shoes, so I'm not fucking buying these. If they come out with a black pair, I think that they will be one of my favorite shoes. Only because these look so fucking comfortable. They almost look like platform Yeezys, which is why I kind of like them more. Because that sole is like two inches thick. And the whole shoe is that sock thing. And they're more of a over the ankle than under the ankle. Like the V2s and the V1s. I'm a high top guy. Um, this is the closest thing I've seen to a high top Yeezy other than the boots, obviously. So I'm fucking, I'm gonna like these. If they make a black pair, I will buy them. I don't give a fuck if they're like 400 or 500 bucks. I'm gonna have to buy them because I know I'm gonna like these. The only problem I'm gonna face is, are you gonna cuff your jeans to, around your ankle and show a little bit of ankle action or let your jeans awkwardly hang over the shoe? That part, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. But if anybody's got them, send me a picture of jeans with these on. I want to see what you guys do. How do you wear them with jeans? How do you style them? Especially skinny jeans. Someone do it for me, will ya? I'll fucking give you a shout out on my page. Um, yeah, so those released. They already released, I think. Let's see what the market is on them. I can't wait until the black pair comes out. Also, I said I was going to pre-order these and I didn't because I've been really fucking busy. But... I am planning on starting up the shoe shit again. I just I got my hand in a lot of different bowls. Yeah, 550 for these. For a white shoe, nah. Nope. For a black shoe though, yeah. The black pair, mark my words, black pair is going to be 700 or more. That's my prediction. Hopefully I fucking get it right for once. All right, well, we talked about first dates. We talked about shoes. We talked about cute story between me and my girlfriend. And now it's time that I shut the fuck up. Have a happy day, you guys. I love you all. And go, go White Sox.